Doctors, midwives, and nurses are usually synonymous with children. But what about doulas? We barely hear about them, which will be changing in the upcoming future, starting now. Uh, my name is Alicia DeGrosa. I am a board certified patient advocate. I'm also a full spectrum doula. Um, I was trained by Ancient Song, so we're trained to be community doulas. What does that mean? Uh, we work within underserved populations, BIPOC populations, lower income, um, and I'm also presently working with the Citywide Doula Initiative which is a program run through um, the New York City Department of Health and um, Mental Hygiene. It's grant funded. Um, we get partial city funding, partial federal funding, serving, um, specific zip codes within um, New York, and I'm within the Brooklyn Division. Dueling is a lot of advocacy work. We're not medical practitioners. We do provide a lot of medical um, information and education to, to make sure that our clients um, have a, a, a decent level of medical literacy once they get into the delivery room so that they're not blindsided by anything. We want them to know exactly what this is um, so they can make proper informed decisions. A lot of, you know, uh, emotional and physical support. So we, we will do some comfort measures, which is, you know, like some massages, yes. things of that nature. Um, when it comes to the more medical aspect of it, the next level up, of course, is a midwife, which is still holistic, but um, training is closer to, say, um, a registered nurse or a nurse practitioner. And then um, the highest level of medical training within the birth work sphere is obstetricians. So obstetricians have um, surgical uh, training, trained to do C-sections and things of that nature, um, emergency interventions. I'm a board certified patient advocate of uh, BCPA. And um, within that sphere, I mainly serve the endometriosis community. Um, endometriosis is a systemic inflammatory disease where tissue that resembles the lining of your uterus is found it, pretty much anywhere. It can be found throughout the pelvic air, um, cavity, throughout the abdominal cavity, um, on the bowels, on the bladder. Um, and in other cases like myself and and quite a few others you have it in your thoracic cavity which is your chest cavity so you can have it in your in your lungs on your heart and in rarer cases you even have it in your brain so endo can really occur anywhere um it's often misconstrued as a menstrual disease as um the beginning of menstruation is often the catalyst um, for symptoms but just because it has a correlation with menstruation doesn't mean that it's caused by menstruation. At the end of the day, uh, endometriosis is essentially a birth defect, and it, can, and it affects uh, one in nine women, and sometimes, um, in more rare cases, it, it can affect men and as well. And endometriosis patients tend to have more high-risk pregnancies, and I wanted to be able to have, you know, the proper skill set to fully support those individuals who need that extra level of advocacy and care in the hospital. Some hospitals are quite doula friendly. Um, like let's say um, Methodist is awesome. They've all always been midwife and doula friendly. So other hospitals, um, which shall remain nameless, um, are, are less, less doula friendly, less baby friendly, less um, pregnancy friendly. Um, they are very concerned about liability. They're very concerned about their bottom line. Um, they're not interested in having this third party um, come in into, into their domain. Um, they they want to stick very closely to their policies and natural birth and natural processes um, and methods aren't, aren't really up their alley. So they, they want to be very, very, you know, to, to, to the letter of what their policies are, even though sometimes those policies contradict what patient rights are. We have the Citywide Dual Initiative is because of COVID, um, you know, it was recognized that um, there was a level of care that was getting lost. Um, it was very difficult to um, provide support, especially in the height of the pandemic, because, um, you know, you were only allowed to have so many support persons. Um, very early on, um, folks weren't even allowed to have any support persons in the hospital with them because we were really trying to limit the number of people in the hospital to um, mitigate any kind of um, risk. Now things are, you know, opening up. Um, um, most hospitals in New York now are allowing the person to have two personal support persons plus a doula. 
Um, other hospitals are saying you're only allowed to have two people tops, and if you want your doula to be one of them, that means you can only have one family member with you. Um, so that, so from from a logistical and policy perspective, it caused um, those kinds of of hindrances, um, um, uh, making people putting people in a position where they had to advocate for themselves and often didn't have the, le the level of knowledge that they needed to have to know how to advocate for themselves correctly. Um, they weren't even aware of when they were, were, you know, had the opportunity for proper informed consent. Uh, it was a lot of doctors just saying, okay, we're gonna do this. COVID during pregnancy and um, pregnancy after COVID. So let's talk about um, COVID in pregnancy first. So we're now learning um, COVID can cause all sorts of complications if you contract the illness during your pregnancy. So um, COVID during pregnancy. So we now know that COVID is not a respiratory illness. It's a vascular disease, and that can create all sorts of complications for a woman during her pregnancy. So number one, there is the placenta. The placenta is the only um, organ in your body that um, grows specifically just for pregnancy, a vascular organ. So when you contract um, COVID during pregnancy, especially in the second or third trimester, you're going to have issues with um, the, the proper growth of your placenta because COVID will cause a hardening of the vascular structures. And um, worst case scenarios, it can cause uh, placental death. Um, these, these kinds of complications are resulting in lots of preterm births, um, more NICU stays, um, and that's where how it affects the child. Um, also, um, after birth, we're noticing more neurological complications with the children, and we're seeing um, more cases of neurodivergence, uh, neurodivergence, um, mental health issues, and other neurological, not just in the brain, but like throughout the nervous system issues with the babies, especially um, within male babies. Um, when it comes to the mom, um, we're seeing uh, higher incidences of preeclampsia. So we're seeing the skyrocketing number of preeclampsia, which is, you know, hypertension. So my hope is for, you know, my people to be able to have the support that they need um, for doctors and practitioners to believe them when they're having, um, when they're noticing something is wrong. Um, One of the main things that I always tell my patients, always tell my clients, is that you and you alone are the expert of your body. You know when something isn't right, and you deserve to be believed, you deserve to be heard, and you deserve to get adequate and proper and responsive care. So that would, that would be my 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 hopes for for this work absolutely is alicia de grossa i'm a board certified patient advocate um as i'm west indian lots of people call me tanti so if you want to find me on instagram t-a-n-t-i-e-l-y-s and uh that's that's on instagram and you can see me around especially in um you know the endo spaces doula work birth work and long covid